welcome everybody to another batch of World of Tanks subscriber replays. My name as always is Maxwell, and today's first video is from the user Failware. That's Failware, and he's driving the T110E5 on a standard battle on Severogorsk, is what I'm going to say. Severogorsk, the new Russian winter map. Uh, <laughs> so before we get into the video, I just want to uh, quickly apologise if you hear some kind of background noise in the background, like hammering or crashing or the sound of plaster falling we're just getting a new roof fitted at the moment and the microphone may pick up some of that background noise so apologies if you do hear any of that secondly we've got some questions coming in for a q and a show if that would be something that you'd be interested in then please send me a question to question at screenreality.com that's question at screenreality.com and uh if we get enough questions and I may decide to start doing a weekly Q&A video and I think that may be the best time to announce the winners of the guess the thumbnail competition as like I said with these videos being pre-recorded a few days in advance we may not have an opportunity to actually find out who is the guess the thumbnail competition winner and it may get confusing and messy and just not work at all so that may have to be the new way that we do that one so anyway, off to this video. Failware deciding to take the hill on the right-hand flank along with a lot of his allies. There aren't many people going on the left-hand flank, so they're going to have to be aware of that one. As you can see, there is an E75, and there was a tortoise up there, but he has now been taken out. So it looks like the enemy may be pushing that flank. Got a nice little hit there on the, uh, on the leopard. So the guys, well, they've got this hill nicely secured, so all they really need is just somebody on that left-hand flank to spot for them and then these guys from this hill should be able to rain down some damage on them as you can see they've got a T-71 camping in the centre there so if he can get closer to that hill and get some eyes on the guys that are up there then hopefully they should be able to rain some damage down on them there's the leopard from earlier gets another good hit on that guy so far the enemy should be arriving there we go I was just going to say the enemy should be arriving at this hill any moment now as they do spawn considerably further away and as you can, as I said, that AT-95 appeared on the mini-map there. So now they're going to have to switch themselves around and go and contest the approach to the hill, which is exactly what this T-54 is doing here. He was trying to contest the approach to the hill. Unfortunately, it looks like he's taken a bit of a battering. So uh, Phil Wedge just going to spin himself around uh, in an attempt to give him some support. Take the lead because he's got superior armour and hit points, especially because the T-54 is taking a bit of a battering. So finds a T-95 and a T-30 was that? Couldn't quite see. I think it was an E-75. So nothing like T-30 whatsoever. On the plus side, that T-95 is very, very slow. So it's going to take him quite an age to get up this hill. So hopefully Failware should be able to put some good damage on him as he's making his approach. You see the T-95 returning fire there, missing horrendously. Looks like other people are also putting some damage on him. Excuse me, just had a quick sneeze there. Hopefully I uh, muted the microphone for that. If not, then I uh, apologise for deafening you. So T95 still making its slow lumbering way up this hill. Again, not the fastest. Well, in fact, I think it's one of the, if not the slowest tank in the game. E75 only managing to get the track here. So he's just going to take that shot and then try and pick off their weak spots. Not quite hitting the commander's hatch on the top of the 75 there so the 75 is gonna be a little emboldened by that feel a little braver and start trying to push up the hill a little bit more unfortunately he's taking his gun off target looking the wrong way and phil Wes able to put that shot through his commander's hatch and do a good chunk of damage to him luckily the reload on his cannon here is nice and fast so when the 75 the opportunity that the 75 has to counter attack is severely limited as you can see, Failware's got the best of the terrain here, as he's got the mountain on his left-hand side, and his weak spot commander's hatch is also on his left-hand side, whereas the 75 has the hill on his right-hand side, but his commander's hatch is on his left-hand side. Oh, that was a mouthful. So basically, the terrain helping Failware out here. Although it looks like his enemy have just, uh, the allies have just decided to roll over and not really participate in this battle. As you can see, there's an IS-8 pushing directly up the front there. 
Fieldware did drop back in an effort to offer a little bit of support to that T-54. Oh, can he? Yes, he can. Gets a nice shot through the top of this T-95. So basically, he's just sat at the top of this hill and whittled a T-95 and a D-75 down to pretty much zero health. And uh, T-95 deciding that uh, it's time to fall back. No, I was going to say, should have decided that it was time to fall back. But no, he's going to try and rely on his armor. Nope, now he has decided to drop back. Not really able to rely on that armor as Failware has been able to penetrate it pretty much at his leisure. And there we go. Finally able to take him out. Although it looks like his T-54 friend now has also been eliminated. Just got to play it carefully. You find out where the C-75 is. The... That wasn't the E-75. That was another 110 E-5. Looks like that E-75 is actually flanked all the way around to join where that IS-8 was attacking to try and come around the back of Failware, considering that all of Failware's allies have just been eliminated on this little flat ridge here. Uh, plateau, if you will. Oh, takes a big hit in the front there, but uh, does zero damage. And this E-100 now trying to get over the hill in an effort to get some free hits. But Failware just denying them any kind of position. Not quite able to get a shot through the armour of that E100. But the E100 just decided to do some landscaping and remodel the side of that mountain. Unfortunately though, his shot just bounced on the underplate of this E100. Hopefully he can put one through the side of the turret. There we go. Gets a nice gold round through the, front, the uh, flat front plate of that turret. But the E75 is able to get a little bit of damage in return. So Philware just going to charge forward. He has the superior reflexes and he's able to finally take out that E75 and pick up kill number four. And manage to even this game up single-handedly. So they all got into a good position to begin with here. But then the enemy made some good tactical decisions to flank and manoeuvre around them and were able to whittle them down until they had quite a substantial lead but then unfortunately Failware was able to take out that T95, another 110 E5, an E100 and an E75 and even up the score here at 12 to 12. So we're just going to speed it up a little bit until we get back into some action because when you get a, a tier 10 game at a score of well 12 to 13 now as you said don't go alone FV and the FV went alone and died so when you've got a game which is three against two in a tier 10 battle you really want to take this slowly and have a good think about it you don't want to rush into any of these uh, rush into any of these decisions and get yourself taken out when you are pretty much your team's only hope now let's face it an object 261 can make an impact but probably not by himself Got spotted out there and the uh, the enemy 261 decided to have a shot there and missed, luckily. So I'm going to drop back in an effort to defend the base. Oh, he's been spotted out, so somebody's here. There we go, there's the T-30. Going to see if he can get a little bit of damage on him. Try and keep himself hold down. T-30 just about misses, so a little bit unlucky for him. I think the T-30 thinks he's in a hold down position, but he's not quite. Not really sure where he's looking either. But uh, the Object 261 is able to finish him off. And that is a good hit from him. So now it looks like they're just, he's just going to head back to the hill. As the last place the E100 was spotted was defending the base. Camping real hard. Probably why he has zero kills. Oh no, there he is. He's been spotted halfway across the map. Probably making a beeline for the cap zone. So at least he's moving. Ooh, managed to get a good hit through the side of the Jagdpanzer. And he's still not spotted out here. And looks like the artillery is also making a beeline for the base. It looks like the two artillery pieces may actually clash here. As the enemy 261 hangs over the edge of the cliff and is able to take out the allied object 261. And then manages to get behind the building and fade into the fog of war just in time to be safe there. So we're going to be heading off to the enemy base now in an effort to get a base capture done. But just as he arrives close to the base, the enemy starts a base capture. So if he'd arrived at the base earlier, 
he probably could have got that one done in time even though there was two of the enemies but as it is they've started a base capture before him so he has no choice but to get back to the cap zone in an effort to try and stop this one uh, with the amount of hit points he's got 1197 I'm not quite sure if the E100 will be able to one shot him if he gets a penetration uh, or if this object 261 will be able to one shot him if he gets a good damage roll so uh, two shots at least will take him out but it possibly could be a single shot from either one of these so he's just going to have to come at the allied base you see there's both of them in there now uh, with just 10 seconds left to this cap he's just going to have to sod tactics and coming at the base from a funny angle he's just going to have to get himself in there and there we go managing to get a hit on the side of this Jagdpanzer reset the cap and picks out the object 261 who clearly isn't paying attention Although, looks like he was only just spotted there, so he probably wasn't paying attention that the Jagdpanzer had been hit. Jagdpanzer tried to knock the building down in an effort to get a shot on target and take out Failware, but unfortunately not quite able to do it in time, and Failware is able to take him out before he can get his gun on target. Picking up a nice, well-deserved six kills and 7,800 damage. So an absolutely awesome game from Failware there in the T110E5. And as always, the score screens are coming right up. And our next replay is from the user Darth Vader SRB. That's Darth Vader SRB, and he's driving the M48 pattern on an encounter battle on Prokhorovka. So encounter battles on Prokhorovka probably not seen very often. <laughs> Look at this immense traffic jam trying to get over the hill here. So at least the Allied team doing the smart thing of most of them heading towards this cap zone. You've got an IS-3 and a mouse. Uh, good tactical call on that part, having the mouse and the IS-3. Two tanks which are renowned for being able to bounce and soak up quite a lot of damage. Uh, although if you know what you're doing, it's pretty easy to penetrate an IS-3's weak spots. Mouse, on the other hand, no matter how good you are at the game, uh, the mouse is still a pretty tough nut to crack. So those two guys are going to be heading off down the left flank in an effort to defend any early rush from the enemy team. Allies mostly going to be heading towards the cap zone and then flanking over on this far right hand flank to take the hill. Although there looks like there's a couple of them heading over onto the island for some reason. Uh, not really sure what kind of vantage point you get on the cap zone from the island. Uh, but it doesn't look like a very good one whatsoever. So Darth Vader manages to find a couple of enemy tanks here. Not really able to get a shot on either of them. Has one anyway, just in case it manages to sneak its way over the train tracks, through the train tracks, and hit one of these guys. Not quite able to do that. You can find the gun of this T-32, but that's a very risky shot to take. And uh, just deciding against having that one there. So we're going to get a little bit higher up the mountain here. Uh, in an effort to try and oh nice hit there on that uh, IS-3 was that wasn't expecting that shot to hit T-32 making a beeline into the cap zone here just going to try and get some sustained damage through the side armour of these guys managed to get a good hit on that guy there can his gun reload in time to take this T-32 yes it can because somebody nicely decided to shoot his tracks off for him. Not able to land a shot there. So just going to drop back a little bit. This uh, Tiger 2 gets revealed now. And he's just going to be angling in an effort to try and bounce some of these shots. The Tiger 2 now with, uh, with the buffs it's had. It's pretty tough actually. It's a pretty nice tank. If you know how to angle it well then it's uh, it can be a formidable 4. 
unfortunately, if you don't know how to angle the German tanks, then you're pretty much just in trouble. Oh, T-32 managed to land a good shot in return there, but it didn't do any damage. Oh, very nice shot there, having a blind shot into the fog of war in an effort to try and get that T-32 as he dropped back. And indeed, that shot landed, and that shot picked him up kill number one. So as a T-34 sitting on the other side of the train tracks, he's able to sneak a shot underneath the train car there and do some significant damage to him. Tiger 2 still angling himself pretty well, so he's just going to decide to try and have another shot at this T-34, and that is kill number 2. Now he's going to be heading further up the mountain here, and that will just allow him to get a better angle on this Tiger 2 there as you can see gets did he I'm not sure if he got that hit there but he definitely got a hit there and definitely got a little bit of damage on him so this Tiger 2 really once he started taking damage there should have dropped back and used the buildings as cover in an effort to try and stay alive but instead he just tried to rely on his armor there uh, and his armor failed him because he was getting shot from multiple different angles from multiple different tanks and they were able to just pick out his weak spots and take him out. So it looks like the mouse has been taken out on the far left-hand flank there. And the enemy is actually pushing a couple of heavy tanks up there. But at the end of the day, pushing heavy tanks up the left-hand flank isn't going to win you an encounter battle. As the objective is over here on the right-hand flank. Gets a nice shot through the top of uh, that tank there. So it looks like the enemy's turned up late to the party on this hill here. And as they are cresting the rise on the other side there, they're going to be just be taking hit after hit. And this E4. Ooh, unfortunately they had to get a zero damage critical on that IS-8 there. And he just manages to slither back over the top of the hill with his life. And uh, his 116 hit points intact. Actually, correct correction there, that looks like an IS-3 and not an IS-8. So another Tiger 2 going to come in here and try and take over the uh, corpse of his fallen comrade. And to be honest, what he's doing is just getting into the cap zone in an effort to try and stop that uh, cap timer going up by any more there. As you saw, it was on 73%. But uh, someone is able to get a good reset there. And just having yourself bodily in that cap zone in an encounter battle. What that does is it just stops the cap timer from building up anymore. Darth Vader able to pick up kill number five now. On to that IS-3. Just waiting patiently for this Tiger 2 to make a mistake. Although it looks like this full health T-32 has just decided he's having none of it. He's got to make a beeline for him, charge, and then take out his last remaining hit points so there's another tiger 2 camped on the other side of this ridge not really sure what he is thinking he's going to achieve in that situation really should be on the other further up towards the middle and then at least uh, from that position oh very unlucky there to get a little slip and immobilize himself tiger 2's turret getting a buff in the last patch so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to penetrate than it would have been normally. So yeah, not really sure what he's going to be achieving down here at this position. Really should have been more up towards the centre. Probably expecting his team to have more of an impact on this flank. And then from that position you can get some good sniping down at the village and some good sniping up onto the mountain. Unfortunately his team didn't send anywhere near enough tanks over onto this flank deciding for some reason to concentrate more on the left flank although it does well I was going to say it does kind of seem to be working for them but it doesn't because they're losing 10 kills to 8 and the allies are at oh my word they were at 99% cap there and uh, somebody just about managed to get the reset on that one so very very unfortunate for the allies there looks like the enemy tanks turning up just in time Although this Tiger 2 has been caught out in the open with no chance of doing anything. Not really sure. Oh, no, there we go. I thought he was just leaving his side armor exposed to the pattern there, but it wasn't. He was trying in an effort to turn around and get his front armor online. Oh, that shell missing somehow, even though it seemed like it was a dead certain to hit. Tiger 2 getting himself hull down, so the pattern just going to charge. 
as he's got way more than enough hit points to be able to deal with this situation. A little bit of lag there. He did use sniper mode to take that shot, but for some reason it looked like he didn't. Ooh, a little bit unfortunate there. The Tiger 2 angling down the hill meant that his uh, angled front plate was actually a lot flatter than it would have been normally. And he's able to take him out and pick up kill number 7. So we're having a monster game so far, 7,000 damage and 7 kills, having a great game here, could potentially pick himself up a couple of easy kills here, there we go, takes out that 123, and that just leaves this Yag Tiger left caught out in the open, going to try and flank around the side of him, but to be honest he can just take, he can take a hit, no problem from this Yag Tiger, and then there we go, next shot able to finish him off, picking up almost 8,000 damage and a massive 9 kills in this tier 10 battle. So absolutely awesome replay there from Darth Vader SRB. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget guys, if you've got yourself a good replay then please send that to replay at screenreality.com and if you've got yourself a question that you'd like answering in one of our Q&A videos that we're thinking about doing then send that to question at screenreality.com So thanks very much for watching everybody. This has been World of Tanks. I've been Maxwell and I will catch you guys next time.